Hi, and welcome back to TechNut. This is part number 6 of our series on the HP Gen 8 microserver. In this part, we will be configuring our file server. As we won't be using our Active Directory server as our file server, we're gonna create a new virtual machine. Since I'm logged in with my personal user account, I'm gonna go ahead and shift and right click on Hyper-V Manager and select Run as Different User. We're going in and selecting new and virtual machine. Just as before, we're giving our machine a name. Select the second generation of Hyper-V machines. We will be assigning this server two gigabytes of RAM. We're gonna connect it to our LAN. We're gonna use defaults for the hard drive. And we're gonna install the operating system from the ISO just as before. We're gonna double click the machine and start it up. Since we already covered installing Windows 2012 and doing the configuration in previous parts, we will not be going through them this time. Just install Windows, standard edition, with a GUI, set the IP address configuration and join it to the domain. Once you've completed the installation and configuration, shut down the machine. Go into settings. Select the SCSI controller and add a new hard drive. We're going to click new. We're going to select the dynamically expanding option and set a name for the drive. We'll set the size of the drive to a maximum of 2 terabytes. And we're gonna finish. Save the settings and start the machine again. We're signing back into the server. If we open up the file explorer, we can see that the disk is not yet available. We can only see the C drive and the installation DVD. Open the start menu and open administrative tools. Start computer management and go into disk management. You can see that we have an offline drive of 2 terabytes. We're going to right click it and click online. We we'll then right click again and select initialize disk. We will use the GPT option and click OK. As the process completes, we're going to right click on the available space, select new simple volume. Go for the wizard, we're going to assign the maximum amount for the partition. We're going to give it a letter. In this case, we don't have the D available as we'd like. So we're going to use a different letter in the meantime. We're going to click next. We're going to select the details, how to format it. We're going to give it the name data. We're going to finish. And the drive is now ready for use. Since we want to use the letter D for our data drive, we will right click the DVD drive and select change drive letter and puffs. I click change and set it to F. Click OK, ignore the warning. And we're gonna do the same thing for our soon to be D drive. And as you can see in my computer, the drive is now available. On the newly created D drive, we will create some folders that we're soon going to share. We will create a media folder, a personal folder for myself, as well as a folder for our backups.
as multiple users will have access to the media folder, we'll go back into our domain controller and create a new organizational unit for our groups. We're creating two groups, one for read-write access and one for read-only access. I'm adding Niklas to the read-only group and I'm adding myself to the read-write group. We're now going back into the file server to share the folders. In the server manager, open File and Storage Services and select Volumes. As you can see in the Shares screen, it says we need to install a feature. I'm going to click that and follow the guide. After completing the installation and refreshing the server manager, you should have the share option available under File and Storage Services. I'm going to click the blue link to start the guide. We're using the SMB Quick option, so we're just going to click Next. We're going to use a custom path and specify the folders that we've already created. We're starting out with the Media folder. On this screen, we're given the share name. We're going to change it to a capital M. We're going to enter a description. This is, of course, completely optional. And below, you can see the path to the share. I'm going to click Next. On this screen, we have three options. Access-based enumeration means that if a user does not have permission to a folder, it will not be able to see it. Caching of the share allows users to have a copy offline on their computer. We're going to uncheck that. Encryption is of course exactly what it sounds like. We're going to go ahead and customize the permissions. As you can see, a few permissions have already been assigned by default. To get rid of these, we're going to press Disable Inheritance. And select the option to remove the entries. As you can see, now only the local administrator account has access. First, we'll give the member of the Domain Administrators group full access to the folder. As you can see, by default, the permission is assigned to the folder, the subfolders and all the files in it. Next, we're given permissions for our newly created groups. We're starting out with the read-only group. We're going to type in the name of the group click shake name to return all the results that match this. We're going to select the read group, click OK, and we're going to set the default permission. We're also going to add the read write group, which is done the same way. We're also going to check the box modify. As you can see, checking modify will automatically check write. We're now happy with the assigned permissions, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. Click Next and click Create to create the share. Once this is completed, I'm going to click Finish. To show you how this works, we're going to go into the folder and create a new text file. If everything is correctly set up, I should be able to edit this using my personal account, but Niklas should only be able to read it. So I'm just going to give it a name and enter some text into the file. We're going to save and close the file. We're now going to test the permission. We're going into the file browser and navigating to the server. I'm currently signed in with my personal account. You can see that the folder is available and we can see that there is a file here. I should be able to edit this file. I'm going to try to save. We get no errors. 
We're still connected to the same client. However, as you can see on the start menu, we are now logged in using Nicholas' account. We go into the file browser and go to the server. As you can see, the folder is available. We can open it up and we can see the file. However, Nicholas should not be able to save any changes to this file. I'm going to add a row to the file and try to save it. As you can see, we get a save dialog. This is not a good sign. I'm going to save, I'm going to select replace, and as you can see, we get access denied. Everything is working as intended. We will now create another share. We will share my personal folder. I'm going to new, share, and the whistle will start up again. We can use the same options. I'm going to select a new folder. Once again, I'm going to change the name a bit and enter description. As this is my personal folder, I will allow myself access to caching the share locally. We can edit the permission and make sure that only I, the domain administrators and the local administrators on the file server have access. As you can see, I'm granting my own account read-write permissions. We're happy with the changes, so we're going to go ahead and click OK, Next, and create the share. On the client signed in with my own account, I can access the folder and create a new file. Signed in with Nicholas' account, we're going to browse to the server. As you can see, he can see the folder, but when he tries to open it, access is denied. We will also be creating the hidden backup share. To do this, we're starting the wizard, we're selecting the SMB quick once again, we're selecting the folder. And for the share name, we're going to call it backup dollar sign. The dollar sign indicates that this is a hidden share. We're going to enter description. And in this case, it's really important to remember the path to the file share. We're going to leave the share settings at default and we're going to edit the permission. I will be giving my own account read-write permissions. We're going to click OK and finish the wizard. Back on the client with my personal account, we're going back to the server. As you can see, the backup folder is not visible. We're going to refresh, but it's still up there. As you remember, we need to enter the full path of the folder. Backup dollar sign. As you can see, we're now in the hidden folder. Since we will also be installing Plex, I've added some image files to the media directory. When trying to download files on the server, you will get an error. Going to the Internet Explorer options, Select the security tab and modify the settings of the internet zone. Scroll down to the option file download and select enable. Click OK to confirm. You should now be able to download the file. The installation of Plex is extremely straightforward. Just open the executable and click install. 
At the end of the install, click Launch. Plex will load and we'll have to accept the license agreement. We're going to go ahead and click the plus sign to add the picture library. We're selecting pictures. We're clicking next. And we're selecting the folder where we send our pictures. In this case, D, media, and pictures. We're going to add the library. And if we wait for a short while, it will show up. On the client, we're now connecting to Plex. We're opening up our web browser and typing in http colon backslash backslash in the name of your server colon 32400 backslash web. As you can see, Plex is now loading. We have our pictures available, so we're going to click that and see if the if pictures are in fact there. And as you can see, the images from the server are now displayed in Plex. And there you have it. We now have a fully functioning file slash media server up and running in our environment. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In the last part, we will be doing some optimizations. You don't want to miss that.